I'm Jotham, the face behind Play Along Tabs. At the time of this video, this channel is almost a year old, which is kind of crazy. Just want to say a big thank you to everyone that has helped support it along the way. Also very excited to announce the launching of my Patreon, where you can get PDF copies of all the tabs, send me some song requests, and get Patreon-only videos. Hope to see you guys there. To start things off, just thought I'd mention that I am by no means a professional luthier. This is just kind of a fun hobby that I've picked up and learned from watching YouTube tutorials just kind of like this. The first thing I did was make this MDF board outline. You can buy those kind of things online, but it was really easy and quick to make it myself. I'm using a two-piece alder that I got at a local wood store. It had some knots in it, unfortunately, but I was overall able to avoid most of them. Hmm. I must have taken because I can't get close enough because of these parts. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know why I taped it down so quickly. I ended up just tracing the line on the body and here I am starting to cut it out. Obviously just trying to get as close to the line as possible without going over it. I was really trying to get nice and close so that the flush trim router bits didn't have to do as much work. These bits are pretty low quality and I gotta say is the one area I would invest more in if I was gonna do this again. I quickly realized I should be doing this on the router table, help to keep the body perpendicular to the bit. I unfortunately made a couple mistakes using the handheld router there, but this was probably the most satisfying part of the entire build, just how quickly you could see the shape of the body coming into fruition in front of you. And of course, there was a lot of sawdust. And so this is what it looked like when I was all done. You can see there's a couple lines, a couple bumps, but nothing that a bit of sandpaper couldn't fix. And so I got to work sanding that down a little bit and also using a bit of some of wood filler to fill in those little holes that I had created at the beginning. Like it was never there. I then went around the entire base with a corner round router bit just to give it all that comfortable edge so nothing was too sharp there except for like the neck pocket area which you can see. Speaking of neck pocket, I made this quick template using a router again and then clamped it down to my base and started to get going. I quickly realized that I needed a wider base for the router so it wouldn't slip off and overall things went well. Things are looking good here. When I zoom in you can see I made a little bit of a mistake but nothing that a bit of wood filler can't fix. Since I'm just using a squire neck I was able to make a quick template out of paper and then drill the holes where they're supposed to go and there it is attached to the body. And after a bit more fine tuning of the shape of the body, it was time to find the location of the bridge. This is definitely one of the most important steps when you're building your own guitar bass. And so I was making sure to follow lots of different YouTube tutorials and was making all the right measurements when I was doing it. You can see I was using these pieces of string just to make sure that the strings were aligned. And after putting it together, everything looked good. I then traced and made a template of the pickups. And after finding the location of where they go, I started to route them out. I obviously made a couple of mistakes in that first hole there. You can kind of see it. The neck pickup cavity is a little chipped around the edges, but that's okay because the pick guard kind of covers that up anyways. But learning from my mistakes, I went on to the control cavity, which turned out very well since I did many small light passes. And here it is, looking beautiful. When I zoom out here in a second, you can see just the whole base pretty much ready to go. Look at that. Beautiful. Now this is one of the main reasons that I like to put myself through all this trouble and take all this time to build my own base, and that is to custom shape it to fit my body. And so here I am tracing and sanding down the area where it leans against my body and I really just spent a lot of time making it so that it's like a seamless fit when it's sitting in my lap or when I'm standing up with this base. And it really paid off in the long run and I really recommend that anyone building their own guitar or bass or building their own kit takes the time to do that as well. I did a lot of sanding now and you're not even gonna see like one one hundredth of the amount of sanding that I did at this point. It just takes forever. But the smoother it gets now, the better it looks later. This is something I haven't done before. I was pouring epoxy over the surface of the entire base and then spreading it around with a credit card. Um, this kind of took the place of like a wood grain filler and it acts just to 
go in and seal all the pores. And look at that, it looks beautiful. Here I am on the next day doing it on the front. I only did one coat of epoxy on the entire base, but it's totally acceptable to do two, three, even more, just to make sure all those holes are getting sealed. I then sanded with a mask on, of course, because all those plastic particles are getting in the air. Worked on a couple small bumps, and then was starting to get ready to paint. Here I am drilling some of the holes for the wiring. This was one of the most difficult steps, to be honest, drilling this hole right here. It took forever, but thankfully I had the right drill bit. I then started setting up my super official painting booth with the base suspended by a bungee cord from that piece of wood in between those two saw horses. I then did one clear coat before I did final preparations for painting, but I unfortunately found a bunch of small red pieces of plastic and I could not figure out where they came from. But I sanded them off and just started getting ready to paint. So here I am taping up the pickup and control cavities and then eventually the neck pocket as well here. Looks good. And then put some silly putty in the holes for the bridge and we are ready to paint. So here I am once, one last time using compressed air to get all the dust off and the first coat of white paint. But again, found these little small red pieces of plastic Here's a really poor picture of it. You can kind of see a couple of them. Turns out it was coming from the bungee cord that was holding it up. So I replaced that and now things are looking good. That's a couple coats in here. I knew from the start that I wanted a matching headstock and so I removed the hardware and taped it up. I also wanted to try the look of matching pickup covers and so I sanded them up so that I could paint them white as well. Here I am giving a couple coats on the headstock and the pickup covers there. This is a cool little control cavity cover that I found on Amazon and I thought why not paint it white as well. It turned out okay. I don't mind it. I might replace it later someday. Um, but here I am now doing the water decal for the Fender logo. And this turned out really well. This is my first time ever doing a water decal like this but it looked fantastic and I'm really happy with how this turned out. And finally, some clear coat over top of it to seal it all on. Next, it was time to draw some graphics onto the base. This is something that I have done before, you may have noticed. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to keep the tradition alive to do this paper plane doodle that snakes across the plane. Here I am using a paint pen to finish up the little graphic of the paper airplane. It all unfortunately got a little smudged when I did the clear coat, but here's a close-up picture of what it looked like, and I think it looked fantastic. I then took the tape out of the control cavity and the pickup cavities, and that was incredibly satisfying, let me tell you. And then I got right back to work spraying some clear coat, the first layer of clear coat onto the base. I'm now taking the tape off the headstock after doing both clear coats and paint, and then using a knife to get that line nice and straight so there's a seamless transition between the wood and the paint. I then spent a bit of time polishing it up to get it nice and shiny before reinstalling the hardware and getting everything ready to go for the neck. Back to the body, I took the tape off of the neck cavity and then sprayed that with a little bit of sealant as well. You can see a bit of that wood filler in there. And we're back to sanding. This time I was doing wet sanding with mainly this 1000 grit block, but then moving upwards to uh, 2000 up to these 9000 pads that I had just to get a smooth and glossy finish. And here I am with that polish again. I think this was actually designed for carts, but regardless, it worked great on the base. And so here I am just starting to rub it in with by hand, get some elbow grease going. I did also have this, uh, this pad as well. It didn't work as well as I had hoped it would. And I even went through the paint a couple times. So this is your warning to use with caution. I then attached the neck and wow, was it ever looking good at this point. Adding the strap buttons and then drilling a hole into the control cavity so that everything would fit properly. I'm now adding the pickups and I love how the white paint matches the body. It looks so fantastic. It's unique. I've never seen anything really like this. Uh, then putting the bridge in and I had already placed the ground wire beneath that going into the control cavity. 
I was just using a wiring harness. I've done some soldering in the past, but it's not my strongest suit. So I thought, why not just buy something that is more reliable than anything I will be able to do. Here I am placing it into the cavity. Everything's fitting well. And then drilling holes for the pickup and the control cavity plate there as well. I just wanted to take a second to tell you guys about D'Addario Player Circle, probably the only guitar string and music related loyalty program out there. I'm not sponsored, but I get almost everything, including my drum heads, drumsticks, reeds, and guitar strings from D'Addario so that I can collect points on my purchases and then use that for free stuff or just insane deals in general from Player Circle. Click the link in the description to sign up so that we can both get some free points to use towards some new free strings. And just like that, we're adding the final touches. I just love the way that the white binding and white block inlays match the body. And to top it off, those matching pickup covers are stunning as well. You're probably dying to hear how this thing sounds at this point, eh? I've got four really cool bass lines for you that I absolutely adore. If you recognize them, let me know what they are in the comments. Well, that's all from me, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed watching and maybe even learned something new. You can find links to my Patreon and the Dario Player Circle in the description. Keep making music, everyone. I'll see you next time.